Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and in this video we're going to be pouring a concrete slab and installing a two-post automotive lift. And here it is. It's a 9,000 pound asymmetric lift. I bought it a couple years ago at an auction. There was a car dealership that was maybe either moving or shutting down, I'm not sure, but in any case they were auctioning off all their stuff and I picked this up for what I think is a pretty good deal. Now I should explain, I intend for this installation to be fairly temporary, maybe only for a year or so. I really would like to knock this shop down and build a nice new one with a concrete slab and all that good stuff because this shop has a dirt floor, it has open eaves, there's wind comes in here in the winter, uh, leaves blow in from the eaves. It's really pretty messy in here and it's not a very nice place to work. Now I'm going to be pouring the concrete slab somewhere in this area and it's going to be about as small as I can make it while still having the lift safe to use. I decided to go with dimensions of 4 feet by 12 feet. Unfortunately, that doesn't provide me a large concrete slab on which to work, but like I said, this is only temporary. Even with a slab that small, when I pour it 6 inches thick, it still takes a full pallet of concrete. Another thing that I have to worry about is that the ceilings in this building are a little bit short to install a lift like this. I'll be installing the lift in its low ceiling configuration, which will help, but I may have to position the concrete slab a little bit lower than I would like in order to make it so that it fits. Right about here is where the edge of the lift is going to be, so now I can measure to the ceiling and see if it's going to fit. So I have about 142 inches, which is actually enough. 142 inches is 11 feet 10 inches, and I need 11 feet uh, 4 inches for this, so that's good. So that gives me six extra inches. Because I have six inches to spare on this end, I technically don't actually have to dig down at all here. I could just have the slab sit on top of the dirt. Uh, over here, the floor is slanted quite a bit, so I am gonna have definitely have to take a bit out over here. Although that said, I am gonna take at least a little bit out on this side because I don't want to have it touching up against the roof. Oh boy. This is really tough ground. So I'm working on assembling this form here, and I'm using duplex nails. They basically have two heads, so you bang it into the first head, and then there's this much sticking out so that you can use a claw hammer to uh, pull it out the rest of the way. So it's meant for building temporary stuff like this. Well, this is where we're at so far. We've got it pretty much level, and you can see how much the ground slopes here. The form is actually sticking up over here out of the ground and then it's quite a few inches under the ground over there. So one of the things that I'll be doing as part of this is probably leveling the floor in here a bit. So I'm gonna bang these 18 inch stakes at the corners and the holes in them allow me to put a screw or a nail through it into this and it'll hold it in place at the right height. It wouldn't be a proper video without me unnecessarily welding something together. Yeah, we'll be going around the corner. 
Well, this is my first heavy load here. It's over 3,300 pounds. We have very little gap in here, but the uh, there's still enough room, several inches in between the uh, cross members and the tire. And can you see the helper springs are on the stops there? So this should be interesting, but I think we will make it home just fine. So I have 42 bags of concrete for this pour. I'm probably gonna mix two bags at a time along with a little less than two gallons of water in each wheelbarrow full, and then dump it in, spread it out, smooth it out, and uh, I mean, how hard could it be? One thing to note is that concrete is not supposed to fall below 32 degrees within the first 24 hours of pouring, and so I've chosen a date when it's not supposed to get that cold tonight. Anyway, let's get on with it. Well, that's one bag. Now I'm wondering if it's gonna be easier to just do one bag at a time, because if I do two bags, it might be harder to mix, but I suppose we'll try it out and find out. I think this is gonna take a while. back and forth, do fine motions to spread out the concrete. All right, so let's try this with my new vlogging camera, which is gonna take over for at least some of the tasks that I use my GoPro for. So behind me is the concrete slab. It's looking pretty good. I hope that it will dry smoothly. And uh, in about 24 hours, it should be cured enough so that I can walk on it. And I think that probably means that I have tomorrow off. Actually, no, probably not. I have more than enough stuff to do to keep myself busy. In any case, we'll pick up on this project when that thing dries enough to walk on it. Oh, and a couple more things. It took about two and a half hours for the two of us to do that, mixing all the concrete by hand. We did one bag at a time because we figured that was just easiest. Uh, and then also I have four bags of concrete left, which means that I used a total of 38 80 pound bags of concrete to pour this slab. The next day. Well, here's the finished result. It came out pretty well. I mean, it's not like 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn good, especially for, well, it's, it's technically my second slab ever. The first one was quite a small one and it didn't come out nearly as well as this one did, but yeah, pretty smooth, pretty good. Let's try walking on it. Yeah, as expected, you know, it, it supports me just fine. It's actually been over 24 hours. So yeah, you can see that the slab still has a fair amount of moisture in it, which is good. Cool temperatures helps the concrete to cure more slowly, and it also helps to retain moisture, and it really helps to end up with a stronger finished product. Of course, with that said, if I did it in 70, 80 degree weather, I'm sure it would still be fine because this concrete is rated for 4,000 PSI, I believe, and the lift only calls for 3,000 PSI. So even if this ends up being, I don't know, 4,500, 5,000 PSI, um, it's really overkill.
While I have these laying on their side, I want to convert them into the low ceiling configuration, which saves four inches of height. And you can see these holes, really, I just pull out these bolts and there are two on the other side. And I move them to using these holes and it basically saves me four inches, which is what this is. All right, well, I have these things pretty much in place. I think they weigh around 500 pounds, so they're not light, but it is also possible to move them around by hand. So the next step is to install this member down here, which goes across the top. And I measured from right about here to the same place on the other post to be about 107 inches, which is uh, what I also measured on this top cross member. So. Hopefully I'll be able to do this by myself. It's a little bit long. It's not too heavy, but it's pretty awkward because I have to be down on one end while holding it in place and inserting bolts. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but this is what I do. This can only go badly. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, no, it's, it's heavy enough so that this is really difficult. Oh no, that's actually like pretty good. All right, got the bolt in. Use a washer and a nut. Okay. Ooh. Look at that, it's in place. It's only held in by two bolts, but I mean, that was the hard part, the rest is easy. So I bought a hammer drill just for this and I'm gonna use this nifty little carbide drill bit meant for a hammer drill. I'm gonna drill some three quarter inch holes to mount this thing and then I'll be installing these anchors in those holes which will hold the lift in place. So this thing right here is adjustable and I think you use this to mark the hole depth. And the hole depth is supposed to be four and a quarter inches. So if I have this here, I'm actually gonna be hitting the uh, base plate of this. So I need to adjust for that. Three quarters of an inch. We're gonna set the thickness to five inches. That went through this so easily. That was unbelievable how well that worked. Oof. Whew, don't breathe that stuff in. And these anchors go in. They're pretty snug. They're supposed to be. So you just hammer them in. And I'm not gonna tighten this yet because I want to go ahead and put shims underneath it as necessary. This one actually looks pretty level. I don't know if this one's gonna need any shims. Well, I got all of the anchor bolts in and as far as shimming it goes, uh, the biggest gap is over here and I can't even get the smallest shim I have in there. So I think this is gonna be okay and doesn't need to be shimmed. When I tighten these down, it will bend the steel 
just a little bit as necessary to conform to the concrete. So we're good over here. The other side, however, I think is gonna need some shims. Over on this side, I did end up having to do a little bit of shimming, a maximum of a quarter inch. And luckily I have this bag of assorted shims that helped me accomplish that job. As I'm tightening this, I'm not actually going to tighten it to 150 foot-pounds right away, which is what it calls for. I'm really just gonna snug these up so that I don't put a ton of stress on the concrete until it's actually closer to being fully cured. In cold weather like this, it does cure pretty slowly, so I'll be sure to torque these down to their full strength before I actually put a vehicle on this lift. There we go, nice and sturdy. So, the hydraulic power unit gets mounted up here on the passenger side lift. It's heavy. There we go. The person who disassembled it took some rubber gloves and covered the ends of this and then tied it off with a zip tie. This is really what's left of the rubber glove, I guess just one finger. In any case, it probably did a good job of keeping it clean. Looks like it did. So yeah, this is the hose that goes to the cylinder on this side, and then the hose that goes to the cylinder on the other side attaches to here. All right, so this cable right here, it's threaded here. Uh, this goes up across to the other side, and it attaches to a mounting point just like this one on the other side. There's also a cable on the other side that runs over to this side. That's what attaches here. And these are used to keep the two lift points on each side at the same level. So there are two pulleys up here, one on the front, one in the back. This one goes in the back, and I can tell that because this attaches to that carriage thing in the back. So this cable needs to be attached to this mounting point by a nut that threads over this. And unfortunately, because I lowered this thing into the low ceiling mode, I took off four inches from both bases. That basically puts this thing eight inches below this. The solution is to use an eight inch piece of half inch schedule 40 pipe, and that acts as a spacer. And then I can thread the nut on right here. I just don't know how I'm gonna get this all the way under there and then be able to thread a nut on inside of this. Maybe if I raise this whole assembly up, then I can get from underneath it with some extensions. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to try out the hydraulic pump and see if I can get it to move this assembly up. There is, of course, gonna be some air in the system from having it disconnected. This is uh, pretty much all the way full and the cylinders also, I'm sure, still have some oil in it. So, I don't know, we'll see what happens here. The other one's moving up pretty well. And here comes this one. Well, there's a good start. See if I can lower it down to the stop here. Mm, it might need some more weight on it to lower itself down, yeah. Well, I managed to get it on there sort of hand tight. It's actually closed at the bottom, so you can't get in from the bottom, so you have to do it from the top, so it's a little tricky. This lift has a safety feature in case the hydraulics fail to keep the lift arms from crashing down under the weight of a vehicle. That safety feature would be this latch here and another one on the other post. The hydraulic cylinder and the carriage that's attached to it have multiple stops in it that this latch is able to latch onto. That's what causes the lift to make a clicking sound as you raise it up. It's pretty standard on all lifts as far as I know. In order to lower the lift, this has to be pulled out and so does the one on the other side. However, it's kind of difficult. Your arms aren't really gonna be long enough in order to do both of these at the same time. So what they have is there's a cable here which runs from this up across and then over to the other side, which when I pull this one open, it also releases the latch on the other side. So we've got a little loop here on the end it goes over this, and then it goes underneath this little pulley up to the top. How exactly am I going to do this? 
Maybe I need to get up to the top first and lower this down. There we go, seven mil. So these things don't really like to go down on their own. Here, watch. I mean, there's nothing. If I put a little bit of weight on it, you can see it goes down. And uh, really what I need to do is install the arms, I think they're called, legs, arms, they must be arms. So I'm gonna install those and then they're pretty darn heavy. So I think that will be enough so that these will go down on their own. So the short arm goes where the front of the vehicle is gonna go. There we go. So this is locked into place by this little gear thing over here. And then if I want to unlock it, just pull this up and then I can freely move it. That's cool. Yeah, the longer arm is a lot heavier. It probably weighs a good hundred pounds if I had to guess. Nice. Cool, moves nicely and locks in place. All right, with all this extra weight on it, now let's give it a try. Yeah, there we go. It's moving pretty slowly. You know, I don't know if there's anything that I need to lubricate. It's a little bit crusty and dirty in there, but we'll clean that out, blow it out with an air gun. But yeah, it's working. So the next thing I need to do is bleed the air out of the hydraulic cylinders because these were disconnected and they've been sitting for a while. There is of course some air in there. Now all the air rises to the top because air is lighter than hydraulic oil. And so all I have to do is open up this bleed screw here at the top. I should note that the cylinders, they're probably about a foot off the ground. The instruction manual calls to raise it up two feet off the ground, but whatever, it's close enough. Basically, I just have to open up this bleed screw. Uh, I'll probably hear air coming out, and then once it turns into just fluid coming out, close it up, and I'm done. Well, do the other side, and then I'm done. Can you hear that? Oh, yeah, so I don't know if you could hear that, but there was some air coming out, and now it's just fluid, so it was pretty easy to do, very easy. As for topping the reservoir off with hydraulic fluid, the manual calls for Dexron 3 ATF or an ISO 32 hydraulic fluid. And of course, I'm going to be using Dexron 3 because that's what I have and it's cheap. Now, this reservoir was mostly full when I bought the thing. Looking in now, the level is it's a little bit low, so. But I don't think I need to add too much fluid. All right, it is that time. I'm going to torque these nuts down before I test this lift. And look, I actually am going to use a torque wrench on this. So 150 foot-pounds. I have no idea if this torque wrench actually works. Yeah, I don't know. That feels like that should be pretty good. <sighs> this is why I don't use a torque wrench, because I have cheap torque wrenches and I don't think that they're actually accurate. So. What's the point of using a torque wrench and if you're torquing things incorrectly? Maybe I need to buy expensive torque wrenches. I mean, I go to the gym enough to know what a certain amount of weight feels like, and you figure that this handle is two feet long. If this is 150 foot-pounds, it should feel like I'm putting 75 pounds of force on it, and that's 150 foot-pounds. And that's what it feels like, and it's not clicking. I was a little bit worried that this running board would get in the way because I think it does on my blue truck, which has one of these, but this one, the frame rails on this stick down lower than they do on the blue truck. That one is a uh, 1500.
All right, let's give this a try. I don't really know for sure where the center of gravity is on this truck, so I'm just gonna start it out slowly and uh, we'll see if it looks like it's gonna tip off or something. <laughs> Hey, well, it's looking pretty good so far. Now, before I actually get underneath this, I'm just gonna lower it down onto the stop so that it's not resting on the hydraulics. And to do that, you press this lever without pressing this lever. So this will just lower it down. Oh, it looks like it's a little bit uneven. Looks like this one is on a stop and that one just missed it. So I need to go up a little farther maybe. Okay, you could hear, I don't know if you could hear it, but I could hear a clicking over there, which tells me that one is on it, stop. So now I can go down. Yep. Cool. These both should be on their stops. If I pull this, I mean, there's a little bit of give in the wire, but I can feel it won't go all the way down, which means that they're both locked into their stops. Oh, okay. That wasn't on its stop. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah. Just kidding. Now it's on its stop. I can't even move this lever at all. So now I know that both of these are good to go. Yeah. That's pretty sturdy. All right. Let's go underneath. It's pretty nice, like having all this room to move around underneath a vehicle that I'm gonna be working on. Now, I only raised the lift to about half of its capacity, but unfortunately, because I am a really tall dude, this lift does not raise up nearly as high as I am tall. And that means that I kind of am doubtful that I'll actually be able to stand up underneath the truck while I'm working on it. I may just prefer to have it low like this so that I can kind of crouch underneath it or perhaps I'll get a stool that I can sit on while I work. There are companies that make lifts that do lift up really high and maybe that's something I will consider when I'd finally get around to building my dream shop. Well, I am really excited to have this lift installed because I think it is going to have a huge impact towards improving my productivity. Right now I have so much work to do, not just on this truck, but on most of my vehicles right now, all but one are broken and having this lift is really gonna help me get through all of them to repair all of the issues. That might even mean that I may be able to get my videos out just a little bit faster. I know some of you guys want that. In any case, thank you so much for watching and we will catch you in the next one.